Hello and welcome to the MAC weather page for this Thursday, October 1st. You can see temperatures fairly close to normal, low to mid 40s across the area. Over the next three days, one of the big stories around the Great Lakes is going to be the strong winds, but that'll help prevent any serious frost or freeze threats across the Great Lakes. Again, as winds hold up uh, at night enough to keep us from uh, picking up any uh, serious frost threats. Uh, temperatures over the next several days will be in the 50s to uh, low 60s, so it'll be a fairly cool pattern out there. And the big news is definitely going to be across the eastern United States. If we take a look at the Great Lakes, you can see our winds are predominantly out of the uh, northeast, bringing the cooler, drier in from Canada. But eventually, that easterly component may help to bring some of the uh, moisture from the eastern seaboard back towards the Great Lakes and could bring a little bit more in the way of additional rainfall to the eastern parts of the state. But again, over the next five days, about a quarter to a half inch of precipitation is possible. So not a lot of rain, and most of that will fall later this weekend into early next week before we return to some sunshine by the middle of the next week as that big system off the east coast moves away and high pressure builds in. You can see temperatures mainly in the 40s across much of the lower peninsula. During the last hour, it was down to 39 degrees at both Houghton Lake and Traverse City, and temperatures in the low 30s across northern Wisconsin into uh, southern parts of the uh, upper peninsula. And if we move to the next map, you can see over the next couple of days, a big storm center is going to move from near Florida to Georgia, and that's going to continue to spread uh, heavy rains up and down uh, the eastern part of the United States as that system slowly moves off to the north. And then we're going to be watching Hurricane Johnny Cash, I mean Joaquin, as it moves uh, up into the uh, western Atlantic Basin. And then all the models pretty much show this storm making landfall between the Carolinas and the mid-Atlantic states, except for one important model, and that would be the European model, and we'll show you that in just a second. As we get into the day on uh, Saturday, you can see low pressure again sitting near Georgia, bringing that heavy rain. And then here comes Hurricane Joaquin, and again, we'll have to watch this very closely because it could have some very severe impacts across the eastern part of this, the U.S. here over the coming days. Now if we look at the uh, plot, the spaghetti plots of uh, where all the different models uh, depict the hurricane from to uh, will go, you can see many of those uh, making landfall from uh, South Carolina up into the mid-Atlantic states. And here is our lone European model that takes it safely away from the United States. And uh, you remember there was a European that did so good with Sandy. And uh, it's going to be a slap in the face if the Europeans write uh, to the U.S. model. So this is going to be kind of fun to watch where this uh, storm actually goes to see which model is correct because there is such a huge difference in what the European says versus almost every other model. And if we look at the uh, next map, you can see though some of the potential. Look at some of these uh, local areas over a foot of rain uh, down in the Carolinas, 13.7, 17.3 inches of rain and a huge area of four inches or greater. So this is going to be a big weather story across uh, the eastern part of the United States over the coming days. If we take a look at the 6 to 10 and the 8 to 14 day outlooks, you can see uh, I think there's still going to be more in the way of a colder trough across the center part of the United States, eastern part of the United States, once we get past this system here off the east coast. And you can see they uh, tried to put the warmest uh, temperatures here in the 8 to 14 day outlook out west, which would uh, seem to, to me to indicate more in the way of troughing across our area. But either way, if it's warmer uh, than what I think it's going to be, that's fine too. And let's slide back up to the 6 to 10 day outlook. You can see the coldest temperatures would it be indicated across the Great Lakes, although they show warmer than normal. But again, I think the over idea is that we're going to have more in a way of troughing across the east, bridging to the west. And much of the area will be moist across a large part of the United States. And this is a very similar pattern to what we've seen all summer, so not a big surprise there. If we look at uh, growing degree days, and we'll just put up Breckenridge because it's all but a done deal. Right in the middle of the pack over the last 19 growing seasons here in Breckenridge. And if we take a closer look at that, you can see uh, we talked about uh, we would get closer to normal, but probably not quite make it. And that certainly seems to be the case. Um, let me go back to this uh, last one here. You can see all along I've been plotting 2008 as being kind of a target where I thought we'd end up. And I said if September was really warm, we might be able to make a run at 2006. Well, you can see we're certainly making that run at 2006. And if we look at uh, weather watch for today, you can see across the uh, Pacific Northwest and into western Montana, areas of dense fog across those areas. 
Uh, we also have a large area of frost advisories from the Arrowhead of Minnesota back into eastern Minnesota, northern Wisconsin, into the UP with some freeze warnings across the western UP into north central Wisconsin. Also some frost advisories across northern lower Michigan and freeze warnings in upstate New York. And then a large area of different types of uh, flood advisories, watches, or warnings. Uh, and we're going to see those expand over the coming days. And then, of course, our hurricane warnings off the southeast United States, something we'll keep an eye on here over the next several days. Thanks for stopping by the MAC weather page and have a great day in 73s to all.